you still there? up on my headphones already. Ooh. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. I'm on. I'm on. This is my first time ever doing a live video podcast my first and um this podcast is akashi media podcast live with variety shanavere also known as the daughter of florence ballard the founder of the supremes and i am here today because i am answering questions or responding to questions that have been on my YouTube channel, uh, Akashi Media, channel 1217. Oh, y'all been so dirty and nasty and everything to me, saying all kind of stuff about me. I'm not real, I'm not this, I'm not that, and everything. I got a lot of hate, but I've always had haters. I've always had people that didn't like me ever since I was a little girl and a little baby. So, here it goes. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Okay, I have a lot of things going on in my life right now, dealing with my daughter, my personal life with my daughter. And um, I filed um, some papers with the court because of my daughter and the relationship with my daughter that has been in Detroit, Michigan. Um, what has happened in my life is I moved to Detroit, um, from Detroit, Michigan, and 1993 to California to pursue my career in filmmaking. In Michigan, back home in Michigan, I was already in the business of broadcasting. Um, I went to college there. Um, I worked at a radio station there. Um, I worked on a couple of films there, Hoffa, Zebrahead. Um, I hooked up with a good friend of mine um, by the name of Michael Patrick Jones, who on um, Greco Films as well, and um, we became real good friends over the years and, and stayed in touch off and on and stuff. We were really close there. I worked with General Washington in Detroit, Michigan at Veterans Communication. I was his camera operator. I worked with Mary, and I was her production assistant there as well, working with Brian Piccolo, who everyone knows from the scene and the new dance show. I work with Carmen, who was a Tina Turner impersonator. I work with her. Um, I got my FCC Lifetime radio broadcast license as well in Detroit, Michigan. Um, um, I work with Barrett in Cablevision. Um, I did producing there as well in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was local news anchor. Um, I did local news there with public access with Grand Rapids Television, Channel 56. Um, I went to college there as well, and then I moved back to Detroit for a moment. And also while I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, I hooked back up with my childhood love, baby love, Floyd Mayweather Jr., who was also still there in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the time. And um, he 
is my husband and my Tom Thumb tribal marriage, Native American, African, Asian marriage. He's my husband. And that aspect, uh, we married by our parents in Detroit, Michigan when we were kids. Um, so there it is. We traveled from Grand Rapids, Michigan to the West Coast together. And he got there first, he got the place, got a place to live. I came out from Detroit, lived with him in Las Vegas and his father. Um, he called me back home like two weeks later and was like, hey, I got a girlfriend. I said, what the fuck? You got a girlfriend already? What are you talking about? Damn. You move so damn fast. And then um, he was like, well, you know, I told you I might be seeing other people. I said, I know, but damn, it had to be so damn quick. So um, he's always been an honest person about women, though. And um, he met Josie. Josie Harris is who he met and who he was seeing, who was Janet Jackson's background singer, I mean, not singer, dancer, who happens to also be my relative. Killed two birds with one stone, didn't you, Floyd? <laughs> and um, he was trying to be slick, too. So when I moved there, Josie was there, and she was visiting him and everything. And, um, and Floyd was like, um, you know, you can continue to you know live here with me and everything, but I'm ready to buy a house. I said, okay, cool, you can be there with my mom and my brothers and sisters are coming out from New York. I said, okay, cool, but you know I got to go to school. I'm going to college out in Los Angeles, and that's the thing, me coming back and forth and everything. So that was the, you know, agreement thing that we had going on. But Josie ended up moving in and everything, and she was like, you're going to be a boxer, and I'm ready to get up on this and get these kids. And that's how it was going down, that's what went down. With our relationship, uh, we had an amicable um I won't really say split. We had an amicable uh, departure, more so. We didn't really have a breakup. It was more like he went his way, doing whatever he's going to do. He had school and stuff. He was still in school and everything. I'm a few years older than Floyd, but not that many years older. Um, I went to school in California. The earthquake hit, and um, when the earthquake hit and everything he came out to see my daughter and I and uh, cause at the time my phones and everything wasn't on earthquake everything was crazy the streets were splitting open the um, after shots were going the, the buildings were rocking back and forth back and forth back and forth and everything my best friend Darren had came out from Detroit Michigan as well and he was living with us when the earthquake hit it was weird as fuck experience I said I'm dying this must be the last day of life for everyone in earth and everything because man god must be mad for real you know um but it was just that i guess he just played on what i said years ago 20 years prior to that in 1974 there was an earthquake and diana ross who was my cousin called back home and said yeah we just had the earthquake on my right woo, 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 woo. i said i'm still coming out there i'm still coming out there and everything and um and uh, I did. I came out there 20 years later, 1993. So um, earthquake didn't scare me, but it scared me that time. So it was like a wake up to what I said, and you know, God met me at that level. <laughs> uh, I guess a faith or whatever, you know. And uh, so I had already been saved and everything. Um, I got saved December the 19th, and I had actually received the Holy Spirit that day. But I knew I was going to get the Holy Spirit because something was weird about the apartment that I had moved in. I moved into an apartment, my first apartment in Hollywood, which is located on North Vendome. And I moved into this apartment, and I started speaking in tongues. And my stomach started rolling and rumbling and rumbling. I was like, ooh, I'm speaking a different language. What's going on here? Ooh, ooh. And then when I got to church, to a church I went to in Inglewood, it was an ap apostolic church. The lady just laid her hand on my stomach, and I just went flourish. And it just came on out. So um, I did receive the Holy Spirit and everything. And um, I'm glad that I, I came to California because I was able to receive the Holy Spirit because a lot of things happened to me in Detroit. I was around people who believe in voodoo, witchcraft, 
black magic, putting stuff on me, the Ouija board, putting curses on me and stuff like that. People just hated me like that. Um, and and um, that's just how it was. But I felt like I needed to move on, and I prayed about leaving Detroit, and I did, and I left for all the right reasons. So my daughter and I had been living in Detroit, uh, California and with Floyd Mayweather back and forth with our relationship um, during that time. And um, Floyd came out to see us in West Hollywood, and I had an apartment out in West Hollywood, California. By that time, he had came over there when everything was you know, settled with the earthquake and everything. He came to check on me. That's a real man. I love you for that, Floyd, for coming to check on me, making sure I'm all right and my life is intact. I love you for that. I'll never forget that. And that was the day that um, we were talking, and he said, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing with this relationship I'm in with this other person. Um, I'm not really feeling it. It feels kind of not right for me. I said, well, you can just stay here and move in. I mean, we can do right now the, just a the little bedroom, but we can just move to a bigger place. You, you me, Darren, and I, you know. So um, he was like, hmm. Okay, he just stared and looked at me like, okay, you know. And then that was the day that I actually gave him a ring, I think. I either gave him a ring at my place or I gave him a ring at his home in Nevada. Which one did I place a ring? No, I gave him a ring in Nevada because we came out for Memorial Day. He brought us out from California to his place in Nevada, Memorial Day. So, yeah. I gave him a ring and stuff. I gave him a ring, and I let you know I love you. You know, no matter what you decide with our relationship, I'm still always going to be here for you. I'm always going to be your Tom Thumb marriage wife, your first love, the first one who taught you how to dance. We danced together on a song called My Starship at my parents' house during their birthday party, and it was my father's birthday, which is actually June the 5th. And... Floyd is going to be fighting June the 6th. Years later, uh, I lost my father, and uh, my relationship with my daughter has been really different and heartbreaking. Um, actually, my daughter's birth is August the 26th, 1987. My, my dad was being buried the same day of my daughter's birthday, August the 26th, 1975, six months before my mother's death. Uh, my father was murdered, shot, and killed. Um, so, that's it. Um, so, um, you know, I'm going into this because a lot of people say a lot of things about me in Detroit. It's been a lot of stuff being said, and it's been said from people who claim to be my people, my family, and stuff like that. And I have been doing a lot of... Um, working on myself internally, you know, on myself and everything, and uh, I did my ancestry background test, and I found out some things about myself that were great, that I loved. I knew I was Indian and everything, but a lot of things happened with me in my life when my parents died, my grandmother died, and things like that. So that's what I'm going into today because I am Florence Bella's daughter and because I have another Nicole that has been out there who is related, but um, Maxine's, as far as I know, daughter and cousin. That's what she always told us when we were at her house. Um, but um, she at one time thought she was my sister because I remember her running over to me, and Maxine looked at her and said, that's your cousin, the way she said it. So that was the situation. Um, and then there was an um, event that Mary Wilson um, invited me to, called up the woman that had been keeping me after my mother's passing. And um, she was going by Marlene Scott, but they called her Patricia. And Patricia Bell was supposed to be her name. So we got different name changes for a lot of people. I changed my name over the years from the name that they gave me, which was Roslyn, to Variety. And my name has never been Roslyn. My name has always been Nicole. Everyone's called me Nicole. All the Jacksons called me Nicole. 
Joe Jackson called me Nicole. In fact, Joe Jackson came one time and said um, he was at the house with my mom, and it was he was getting ready, you know, start preparing for my father's um, birthday party, Bones birthday party. Bones was Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s father's best friend at the time. They grew up together as childhood friends, and um, he asked my mother Florence. She said, "Why are you calling her that?" Why are you calling her Roslyn? And he said, that's not her name. You know, he said, that's not her name. Call her by her name so she know what her name is. She knows that's her name. You know, her name is Nicole. And she said, oh, my sister want me to call her that. He said, no, nah, call her by her name. Call her by her real name. That's who she is. You know. Um... And the thing with the name thing with the Rosalind and the Rhonda was told that whenever we were together at that time and we were having gatherings together and photographs that were going to be taken either by media or someone there with a camera, if Rhonda and I were together somewhere playing and we were close in contact with each other, when the photographer or someone was off to the side, they would go, Rhonda or Rosalind. And what Dina said was, uh, Debbie said was, when you call, because everyone was talking in the room, but I could hear them when they was talking. If you call them by Rosalind or Rhonda and in this commotion, both girls are going to turn around and look and respond because they're not going to know which name you're calling because it sounds very similar and alike. Roslyn and Rhonda. It sounds similar. So that was the thing. So that's why you have photographs of me and Rhonda out there in the media. And there are pictures that people say that it's Rhonda. That's not Rhonda. That's really me. And I know what I look like. So um, I've been going through this thing where um we have parents here who basically have erased my parents. Like, I'm not supposed to remember who my real parents were. And they come along and say, this is your father, this and that. When, when people pick a father, whatever they've done over the years, I'm like, no, that's not my dad. So, there have been conversations over the years. I've been with this person. Tommy Chapman has been all in the media with a guy with the name of Thomas Chapman. Thomas Chapman is nobody. He's an invisible man. And that man that was at the funeral name was not Thomas Chapman. His name was Richard. That was my uncle. That was my mother's brother. Um, everyone knows him. He just died in October of last year. He has a son named Kevin. He has a son named Bruce. He has a daughter named Karen, a daughter named Dina, and a daughter named Marty. And Marty and Bruce are fraternal twins. Um, so um, a lot of this has uh, transpired over the years and everything, and I have come out for the past couple years, since about 2016, to clear up what was put out there in the media. I have come out to correct the media, and people have had a problem with that. They have had a problem with me being honest about who I am. So, I didn't, ha I was very busy. When I say busy, I have been very busy over the years. I was so busy over the years. I didn't even get on YouTube. I didn't get on MySpace. I didn't get on Facebook probably until, my God, maybe 2012, maybe. You know, I, I haven't been on all that stuff like that. I've been busy, you know. Um, so I just started really getting into all that. So when I finally got into YouTube, something came upon me and said, Search Florence Ballard daughters, and I decided to search. 
and um, I searched Florence Bella Daughters and did pop up this thing in 1995, Florence Bella Daughters Homeless in Detroit. Then again, this another thing later on, 2010, Florence Bella Daughters Homeless. I wasn't homeless. I was in 1995. I was in film school at UCLA. <laughs> Things that they were saying in the media, oh, my grandmother gave me this house. That's not my grandmother's house. That's not Lorley Ballard's house. I know where my grandmother lives. Then they were in this video walking away from the house on Wyoming Street that I grew up with, with Marlene, also known as Patricia. I know what 8261 Wyoming looks like. I lived there until I was 18. Left home at 18 years old. I had my daughter at 19. Or I left at 19. Because I was pregnant with my daughter when I left and moved to Grand Rapids. Um, bizarre shit. And when you deny me, that show me you hate my mother Florence. I'm just letting people know. That's just how I feel. I don't need anything to do with anyone dealing with Motown or anything. That's my mom. I was born to brown skin and everything. So, um, I am coming out about a lot of things because people aren't stuck in the 1970s. They stuck in, in the mind of things that they've done in the past and what they have gotten away with in the past. And because they have their clique, their crew, their cult, their people that's down with them, their gangs, and I've been by myself with nobody because they tore everything away from me, my parents, my family, my daughter, you know, they have continued to abuse and neglect and take away from. You want to change in and change out and all this other stuff. So this stuff is in my book. I have a book that's coming out that's actually out, um, ready for public thing. I There were just some things we went over for it. And the book is called Rich and famous, famous and broke. My mother, Florence Ballard. When the lights went down, they called her Penny. Everyone called my mama Penny. And um, Aunt Florine. Her nieces and nephews called her Aunt Florine. That's my mom. Um, I had pity bags. My mother saved a lot of money while she was in Motown. A lot. A lot of family members saved their money in penny banks, Kathy Candy, tin cans, everywhere. Television sets, socks, boxes, you name it. We didn't have bank accounts back then. It was old school way. And my mother used to tell me, Every penny counts. Every penny counts. And um, ever since I titled that book, I pick up a penny every day. Or a couple pennies every day. And it's related to my 
My nickname, she called me. Copperhead. Um... I, uh, every time I see a penny, I just say, thank you, Mom, I know it's you. And I've burned Josh money, which is Asian money, fiat money, uh, it's called heaven money, and I burned money to send to them to heaven, and that's what I've done. And I sent her a couple billion dollars, twelve billion dollars, and I sent her a couple trillion dollars because she was um, financially strapped when she passed. So I um, passed on some money when she was here on Earth. And I believe in the scripture when it says, "What's done on Earth is also done in heaven." And I gave her my piggy bank she said when we were going through tough times I said mama you can have my piggy bank you can have my money cause I looked at it as her money too it's still her money she put it in there you know I was so unselfish and she saw and then she went and got my dad and um they got the wraps together and they put all the coins and the wraps open up the banks and everything and it was like $16,000 in there and all these piggy banks I had three banks couldn't even lift them up off the floor and um, and we weren't homeless for 24 hours because we got home the next day but we did still do the Jet Magazine um, article and photo shoot at a couple homes that we had and um, we was living at, living at another home around the corner um, that we had and um, that house was a rented house and um, we've lost the Barry Gordy uh, Motown um, lawsuit and my dad was upset hysterical my dad made a bet obviously on something or something and it, whatever it was the agreement or whatever he did or it killed him he got a murder um, but my dad told me the next day, he said, you know, um, the Motown thing is over, baby. It's over. It's not going to be no more of this, no more, no more magazines, no more TV, no more nothing, you know. I was like, okay. And he said, daddy got to show you what he does for a living, really. Right now, the real deal was going on with me and the real life and um, the hustle life of a hustler and my dad took me to one of these operation things he does with the mafia and um, walked in with me there were cops there detectives there dressed in regular uniform um, money jewelry dope everything Operation Get Down is what it was called. Uh, that night, my father was supposed to go with them to do whatever they do. And um, I guess my daddy wanted me to see what, he, what it was and who he was with, and I did, you know. He thought the guy was a friend of his, the white guy. I learned real quick. You can't be friends with white cops. You know too much. Don't ever think that you can be friends with police officers, detectives. They'll kill you. They'll murder you. Don't give a fuck what you do with them. How you party with them. How you travel with them. They'll kill you. They kill my father. As far as I'm concerned, I guess they killed my mother too. In her own way. But I was there. 
with my mother's body, so I know a lot of things have transpired with her. Especially my book, and I'm not going to go in. Bye, Trey. <laughs> um... It's been very hard growing up without parents. Very hard. Lies. Everybody wanted to blame everything on Motown. Maxine, my mother's sister, even blamed Motown publicly, social media wise, on my mother's death. Florence Ballard. Then you want to say that. <sighs> that Barry Gordy killed her. And Motown killed her. Um, I love Barry Gordy. He wanted to take me to California with him because he felt I deserved a better life than Detroit. And there was an argument with him and my mother's sisters. They didn't want me to leave. But he threatened them and he said, you know, if I take you to court, I'll win. He said, I'll win. Barry Gordy, as far as I'm concerned, didn't kill my mother. And if you want the truth, then you're going to have to hear it from me because I'm Nicole. I'm my mother's daughter. I got a gap in my teeth. I made that gap, just so y'all know, from two picks and stuff. I wasn't born with a gap that was made with two picks and picking my teeth and stuff. <laughs> um, I was just looking at it because there are people in the family that got gaps, and I'm, I don't have it's not a something that I was born with. Um, but no, um, Barry Gordy did not kill my mother, Florence Ballard. I don't feel that. I don't think that. I know there were things that was going on with my father. There was the mafia involved. Maybe it was surrounding around the death of her, just like it was with my father. But I feel what killed my mother was um, maybe maybe that could have happened. But other people knows what happened because other people have made confessions in Los Angeles, California, about what happened to her, to their own best friends in California. And um, my mother had a woman who was a lesbian, who was obsessed with her, who wanted her, and her last name was Chapman. Her name was Gladys Chapman. My mother told her, actually that day, of my dad's birthday party, that they couldn't be more than friends, as girlfriends, they could just be cool because my mother didn't want a woman my mother loved my dad she had an attitude about it I was in the living room and she walked out of the bedroom and said if I can't have you nobody can and I stood in the living room floor and looked at her and I was like, so she wanted my dad, Florence Ballard, wanted my father, not a woman. That led to my mother's death. One of the things that led to my mother's death. This woman was a lesbian. She was a dirty ass lesbian. She was a lesbian that set up rapes on women. She had a, 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 a 
what they call it? Oh. Uh, what's the name for that? I can't think. But she had a thing for light skinned girls. Or light skinned women, obviously. Or something like that. And um, she couldn't have them. She set rapes up. She set up a rape on a woman that was in a music group that we had in Michigan. I just see them all the time. I miss them too. I haven't seen anyone since my mother died. She set a rape up on another woman to be raped by some men in a house. And you can hear it. She was the type of woman that she would set up a rape. And then after the rape, she wanted you to come lean on her, cry on her, cry on her shoulders. So she can console you. That's the way she wanted to get you through rape of men. She didn't like dick. So when I look at my mother's tombstone and I see Chapman, it's basically her way of saying, I married you anyway, bitch. I got you anyway. And your kids. So, anyone in Motown, Detroit, or anything who knows who I'm talking about, but you know it's true, and you know I'm not lying about it, but it's in my book, you can read about it, I'm just giving you a little insight of what's in my book, that's definitely it, that was more than one thing that led to my mother Florence Ballard's death but that's one of them a lot of shit was going on back then I traveled with my mother a lot um, I have a guy named Donald that I ran into um, he remembered me as a child and I ran into him not long ago he asked are you going to put Diana Ross in your book? Mm, very little. I'll talk about Diana like I talk about her now. I mean, Diana taught me how to read and write. She was my babysitter. You guys have read in the papers and the media that Diana was my babysitter. She was my babysitter. You know. Uh, and I thank God for her for that because that's the reason why I was able to give my address and telephone number not the address and my name and my location and where I was located. We called for help from my mom. And she was lying on the living room floor. It's because Diana Ross taught me how to read and write. She told me, you gotta learn about your surroundings with people. And I was about five, six years old when she was teaching me. I was ready to go to school. So Diana was preparing me like two years before school started um, to go to school. So teaching me how to read, write. All the kids were homeschooled. We all were homeschooled. My grandmother was big on education. Merle Ballard was big on education. That's why I had encyclopedia kids and everything. Um... So that's the reason why I was able to dial zero for help. Back then it was still dialing zero or was it 911? I was dialing zero for help. I used to do that shit a lot and play on the phone with the operator all the damn time. We used to call back a lot. <laughs> I used to say, hello, 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 hello. And back then it was the switchboards. When they were pushing in switchboards, that was my job at school too. When I got in high school, I did a switchboard job as the operator. It was funny. 
I've had a lot of jobs over the years. Um, mental illness. I never saw it. I never saw mental illness in my mother, Florence Ballard. I never saw it. I didn't see mental illness. She never abused me. She never yelled at me. She never slapped me. She never punched me. She never grabbed me. She never grabbed me by my hair. She never said, I hate you. She never did any of those things. She was loving. She was sweet. She kept a clean house. Um, she kept herself clean. She kept us clean. She kept my hair calm. Um, she made um, dinner. You know, my mom, um, you know, made things like hot dogs and stuff. Tried her best to make um, chicken. She went and got Betty Crocker cookbooks and stuff like that. Um, I used to come home from school and have homemade donuts. I miss those donuts. They were whole donuts. Brown sugar and cinnamon in the um, in the bowl and Indian apples and my mother's autopsy report. They said that she had brown substance in her stomach. That brown substance had to be her last meal she had. Her last meal with me was Golden Grams. Golden Grams cereal. It was a new cereal that had just came out on the market. And I love graham crackers. And she bought Golden Grams cereal because it had honey on it. And it was sweet. And I love sweet cereal. I think that was the brown substance that they found in her stomach. It had to be the golden graham cereal that they found. That must have been her last meal. So, um, so there are things that I want to talk about it's about my mother's death, and my father's death. Because Nicole Chapman got on the news with Mary Wilson, and they was on the news with the autopsy report. Um, and everything. And um, I have my mother's autopsy right here. And they, she was up there talking about how she called for help. Our grandmother. So I wanted to do this video podcast because of the haters out there and people saying that I'm not real. I know my mom. I was at the funeral. Front seat. That's me sitting on my Uncle Richard's lap. <laughs> and Michelle next to me. And one of the other little girls that you saw with the big bow, that's not Michelle. That's my cousin Doreen. She got a photo shoot too. As soon as I got to the front of the church, I saw her sitting there. I said, Doreen, what you doing here? Her name is not Michelle. That's Doreen. D-O-R-E-E-N. That's my cousin. So, I 
be having attitude problems because I just don't like liars. And I just get tired of people trying to come up, make money, get over, call me a liar, call me a fake. Change documents and stuff like that. So, people want to, I guess, call themselves changing the game or whatever they do. I don't even change nothing. Because I am who I am. I ain't got to modify anything. So, uh, there's a lot of things I just wanted to discuss and talk about. I mean, is this the right thing to do? And um, then I'm going to do it. I got a lot of stuff. But it's all worth it. Why is it worth it? It's because my mom has fans out there. There are people who always wanted to know. There were relatives, I guess, who died who never knew. And people did what they wanted to do for money and whatever they needed to do. And um, I just think it's just best that just lay this to rest. It's no different than laying it to rest like Michael Jackson has fans to lay it to rest. And that's what I'm doing to lay it to rest. And um, I just wanted to do that, you guys, because it's just something to do. Something to do. So, we got these reports and hold on one second I'm going through all this shit while y'all on, on the thing let me turn this let me pause this for a minute okay I'm back um found some of the documents that I wanted to talk about um for the fans and some people that want to always know information. Again, I'm Florence Ballard's daughter, Variety Chenevere, also known as Nicole Ballard, Renee Ballard. Back in the day, some of these people called me Roslyn. Okay, um, I'm going to be reviewing my mother's Florence Beller autopsy report. But first, before I get to that, um, that's me, right here. I was very 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 alert very alert and when I say that I was alert <laughs> I heard her voice I heard her voice and I was looking up at her trying to see with my blind well uh, nearsighted self I'm still nearsighted. That was born nearsighted. My grandfather was nearsighted. I got it from him, but this is me. I was born brown skin, not light brown. Four pounds, 13 ounces, and 21 inches at 1 o'clock a.m. in the morning on a Sunday morning. Sagittarius, born two months early, premature, not two weeks early two months early I was supposed to be due in February but I was born in December December the 17th 1967 even though this article is printed for 68 I don't know why I mean 68 of excuse me 68 of October I just think that she needed time to bond with me or something I think she needed bonding time even though they said it was in October just not in October. Just, just, I don't know what was going on with that. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely 
no, that was born in December, everyone, all of my cousins and I celebrate my birthday in December, Abraham's birthday is in December, Abraham Miller's birthday is in December, Eddie Kendrick's birthday is December 17th, Ed, uh, Abraham Miller's birthday is December 17th, and my cousin Desi is December the 21st, we all celebrated our birthday in December, I am a Sagittarius, I'm born in December. Oh my God, my eyes. What is going on here? Okay. Okay. Um. This right here is me. The other child is Michelle. Okay, I was very, very alert. I wore um, cloth diapers. Okay, um, as you can see, my mom's name says, now you can get the article, but it says um, Florence Ballard. She wasn't married then. My mother wasn't married when she got, when she had me. That's why it says Florence Ballard. Even though people use their maiden names, and maybe they use their names as a star or whatever, or their husbands, my mom was unmarried. That's why I said, it. I'm sorry. This is real. Podcast live. Okay. Florence Ballard. That's what it says. You see that? Okay. My name, you could barely see it, but it's spelled. N I C H O L E, not N I C O L E. Very different from the other person, Nicole Chapman. It's spelled N I C O L E. It's not, she doesn't spell her name like that. Maxine is her mama. She spells her name without an H. We had a lot of cousins, a couple cousins named um, Nicole. So let me get to this. They said in my mother's death certificate, autopsy. By the way, I'm a public notary for the state of California. So I can validate and and notarize documents, and also I can recognize fraud documents. As far as I'm concerned, this is a fraud document. Why do I feel this is a fraud document? I feel that this is a fraud document for the fact that they added Ballard and Chapman and two different types of type being fonts. The typing font is different from the one that says Glenda Chapman. Ballard was added on top later in a different typing font. Strike one. Another thing is, I attended my mother's funeral. This autopsy is the long version autopsy. It doesn't mention anything about the scars on her legs. The bruises on her legs that were on her legs that were purple. From her ankles, calves, going all the way up to her knees. Were whips of scars on her legs and they do not mention it in this autopsy. Mm-hmm. Autopsy report, television show, didn't show that, didn't mention any of that. I'm her child, I went to the funeral. I walked right past that casket and looked at her feet and saw all them bruises on her. (sighs) 
They don't say anything about the cereal of her last meal on this autopsy. The address, I don't feel it's accurate either. That's in my book. Negro. On her autopsy. Negro. My mother was Native American. She was multicultural. I just assumed they just called that one Negro back then. The person that signed for the funeral home is named Denise. Denise with an M. a lot of Denise's in the family whether they were by marriage or by blood that's it that's what I'm going to say about that moving on to the next item We're going to move on to um, Hold on for a second. This is real. Hold on one minute. Okay. The item that I'm moving on to now is the guardian. Make sure this is the right one. Let me turn you guys off one more time. Now, this person I'm talking about now is Thomas Chapman. Thomas Chapman was supposed to be my father. He was supposed to be the husband of my mother, Florence Ballard. This is a live podcast with Akashi Media Podcast Live, Variety Shunavir. I am the daughter of the late Florence Glenda Ballard the founder of the Supremes and the primates of Motown, Hitsville. This is for the fans because there are a lot of things that people want to know about the death of my mother. <laughs> Thomas Chapman filed after my mother's death an acknowledgement of parentage for one child not married 1979 three years later a minor
and then two. 25, 1976, a few days after her death, he filed for the will and things like that. He didn't file for three kids. He filed for one at that time. put you on hold one more time because I have to grab on other documents that's pertaining to my guardianship when I was a minor. One second. I'm back. I'm going to continue on to give some excerpts, explanations of things that's in my book that's titled Famous and Broke, Broken Famous, My Mother Florence Ballard when the lights went down, they called her Penny. Things that I'm talking about in my book, please pick it up soon. Um, so many things or details are for the fans, and so many details are for those who are relatives that may still be alive. A lot of relatives have died. So I'm getting back to talking about the guardianship of my life, Nicole Ballard. I'm Nicole Ballard. I'm also known now as Variety Chenevere. And I'm talking about the autopsy of my mother, Florence Ballard. I'm talking about my guardianship with my grandmother and other relatives that stepped up to be guardians. I was there. The one thing about this guardianship is that I had to identify in court who the women were in court. The judge was a woman and she asked me, do you know who they are? Do you recognize them? Do you know them? The guardianship that took place, my mother was not present. My mother was not there. In the courtroom, she was absent. Excuse me, I need to cough. I'm back. My mother, Florence Ballard, was not present in the courtroom during guardianship. I had to identify the women in the courtroom. I had to give their names and their relationships to my mother. My mother was not there. I really don't remember my grandmother being there. I remember my mother's. I thought it was her friend that was there or someone who was like more like a sister-in-law. But they went to court without my mom. And that was 9, 15, 1975, September a month after my father died. They did not want my father to have custody of me. They were fighting me. I mean, not they were fighting against him and Barry Gordy because Barry Gordy also wanted to take me to California because he was moving Mool Town to California and everyone was following to California. Barry Gordy said, I deserve to have the right to live a good life like all the rest of the other kids. He was not trying to underprivilege me. He wanted me to have a good life like everyone else, Rhonda and everyone else. <laughs> this guardianship took place in September 15th, 1975. My mother wasn't present in the courthouse. Why not? Why would my mother want to have guardianship given to three women and not be there to talk for herself? In September, a month after my father died. Now, getting to my father. 
My father's real name is Lawrence Jones. He died six months before my mother did. Here's his death certificate. A twenty, nineteen seventy five, my father died. He couldn't have possibly been in the courtroom holding me on his lap. He was deceased already. Michigan death report. My mother was unmarried to my father. His wife was named as Deborah, last name unknown. We knew a lot of Deborahs, just like a lot of people know a lot of Dianas and Diane's. And my father's name was Lawrence Jones. My mama's man. And I'm not his only child. He has seven other daughters and we all know him and he lived with me and Florence Ballard now I am the real Nico regardless if he just stuck on being light skinned or light complected people or whatever that's your issue but my daddy died six months before my mother. Let me show you this one more time. Gunshot wound to the abdomen. He died with other people. He didn't die alone. People have even been saying currently on my YouTube that now they're opening up a reinvestigation case on how Paul Williams died. Because they said he was standing drinking something and he was supposed to have shot himself with the hand he had his drink in. <laughs> According to what they said on my YouTube page. Akashi Media, channel 1217. I'm Nicole Ballard. One of the homes that I lived at was spending the night at with one of her friends. I found a gun outside. I picked it up and I gave it to the person. So, there's a little bit of information that I just want to share with you all that's in my book. Please pick it up, a copy, to read the remaining information that's in my book. Famous and Broke, a Broken Famous. My mother, Florence Ballard, when the lights went down, they called her Penny, not Blondie. I'm a daughter out of now. Anyway, 
um, let me go on and do my thing today. It's been over an hour. I hope you all feel a little bit more satisfied. Because I know you're going to say something nasty about me. Like you always do. I got plenty of haters. My daddy's birthday is June the 5th. Floyd Mayweather is fighting on June 6th. The way Floyd Mayweather looks right now, he looks just like how my dad looked for some strange reason. Crazy woman. Crazy women in our lives back then was named Gail and Marlene. Funny how deja vu works. Because now Floyd Mayweather Jr. has a girl in his life named Gaylene. That's my Tom Thumb marriage husband. That my daddy approved me to marry. I love him. And when we got married, we married at zero with no money. I take that back. I'm a Native American, Alaskan, African, Kenyan. India, Indian as well. Biracial, biculture. I was getting $10,000 a month at the time as well. So, um, Floyd and I had money back then. I won't say we were totally zero. But anyway, I know he has other women right now. But if anyone is out there and you planning any shit like randomly, like you just really want to do things in Detroit like you've been doing with my daughter, Kristen, <laughs> I'm going to let you know. I'm on to you. I see through it all. Because you're still right here from the 1970s. You dressing my daughter like Maxine and everything. I see through it. My daughter doesn't have anything to do with anything that happened in the 1970s. So I'm the original creator of Set It Off and Booty Call. So I really think people just feel like they just have something to finish off. You best believe. I'm going to do everything I can to provide for my family and protect them. That's why I'm going viral and I don't care if you all don't believe me or take my word for it. I live this shit. I live through the jealousy, the hate, everything. I live through it all. You hated me, you hated my daddy, and you hated my mama couldn't stand to see her on TV. Couldn't wait for her to get out the group. And then on top of that, you guys talked about my mama so bad that she has $16,000 saved up for a house and piggy banks. Y'all was out there running your miles and y'all was all that. But you stopped talking when it was really you that was on the well fed. Anyway, I hope you all pick up my book because I do be having these personality acts. Because I live through this shit. That's my mother. And I will always defend my mother. This is Variety Shanavir for Akashi Media Podcast Live. The daughter of Florence Ballard. Flow Baby. 12, 17, Po Child, Supreme Child, thank you for tuning in, till next time.